Does anyone have a question? I have a question, Stuart. Yes. It's Magali. Yes, I wanted to ask you, when you come across someone that is trying to get some help and comes to you for getting help, and you realize that that person is incapable of receiving energy, of receiving your love, what do you do? Uh, do you have, you feel that that person is pumping all your energy and you can't, you can enter them? What, how do you react? What's, what's your, what's your reaction to that? You know, I talk about this a lot, Pavali. A lot of people in the world that way that are desperate to get other people's help. You know, they kind of, you know, emotionally and mentally live on welfare. There's nothing there. And yet they don't do anything to really work on themselves. And, you know, frankly, years ago, I used to try to help people like that. And I would say, okay, you know, have patience, do it, work with them, try to love them. And I would give it a little time. And I began to realize, you know, either I wasn't big enough inside to get to a place that could really inspire them to work on themselves, or the very situation itself was impossible. These people, we're just like vampires. They just want to eat other people's energy and they really don't want to do anything to grow. So I began to say no when I saw people like that. I would refer them to psychiatrists, to psychologists, to sometimes even mental institutions, you know, where they should go, you know, because that's the level they're on. And that's the level that might be able to do something to help them. So what I'm saying is you have to really be careful about your own life and your own energy. It's not being selfish. It's recognizing one's limitations and recognizing there are people that truly live in this world like vampires. They eat other people alive and they never do anything about really building themselves and stuff. I mean, I don't care where a person comes from. I've had people study with me that are living on the streets, people in all kinds of, you know, prisons and situations. I don't care about that. I only care about one thing. Do they want to do something about themselves? Are they really willing to make the effort to grow and to build themselves as human beings and to develop their lives? Uh, if they are willing to do that, they have me a thousand percent. If they're not willing to do that, I can wait a little bit and see maybe it'll turn around. But if it doesn't turn around, I really think one of the greatest words in the English language is no. Yeah. No. This energy that comes in this meditation is a gift. It's not my gift, it's a gift from God. It has to be conserved. It has to be treasured. You know, and yes, it's for anybody who's willing to really work on themselves. Because I've seen people, they don't really work on themselves. Even in this meditation, as strong as it is, they don't go anywhere. Because they're not willing to take that step inside that says, I am ready to change. I am ready to grow and to develop myself you know, and get closer to God. <clears throat> I mean, when I was young at this, when I lived in Texas, I had a lot of, I mean, my God, that kitchen and the restaurant was full of people that most of them were really off the wall. You know? I mean, even Rudy, I, you know, people would come to his ashram and they were, you know, I mean, I, one guy on living I said, Rudy, is he gonna come live in the house? I asked him. <laughs> and Rudy said, No, I'm sending him to Big Indian. You know, <laughs> he's not gonna live in the house. You know, I mean, there's what you can do and what you can't do. And there's always giving a person a chance. 
And if they take that chance and use it to change and to grow, then okay, they have, they had Rudy 100%, they have me 100%. You know, I can't say no to people like that. I don't care what their background is. You know, I don't care anything about it. I always used to tell people in the prisons when I taught there, past is dead. The only thing I'm interested in is what you're willing to do with your life now. And are you willing to build your life so that the future brings something remarkable? Now, if people are not willing to do that, I mean, it might be me. I, I just have been through enough of it to say, I mean, I have people that come, we give them the exercise, and then they never show up for class. So I wait maybe a month, and then I just take their names off the list. No problem. I don't send them invitations. You don't send invitations to people that don't come to your party. You know, I mean, on a very, I mean, you send the person an invitation, they don't show up the first time, the second time, the third, you know, you stop sending them an invitation. Obviously, they don't want to be there. And to do this, you really have to have a need to be with God. This is very powerful stuff that goes on here. So simply, you can give the person room, but if nothing happens and they're not willing to change, then you can say no. Yeah, I guess I get, I have to learn to say no. I, I feel like all everyone in this class, we all have like a tremendous heart, tremendous yes. energy and love. You're right. Everyone in this class has a, their hearts around. That's why the energy is this way. Uh -huh. But if a person doesn't work on themselves while they're in this class, they're going to almost unconsciously try to drag the class down, you know, and they're not going to really get the energy. Uh -huh. And there has to be a point where, okay, it's enough. Try something else. Well, I guess all you can do is plant a seed and. You can only do what you can what do. And then you have to be able to have the maturity enough to say it's enough. It's enough. I mean, I mean, there must be 50 people that I have taken off my list here. I had people that told me, well, I don't want to study with you because you I have to get a vaccination to come to your in-person classes. And I'd rather study with somebody that doesn't require that. I said, okay, you know, go study with them. I, what can I do? I had three or four people like that when this COVID thing was in full bloom. Now I don't care. People want to come. You don't have to have a vaccination. You know, all I ask about is you have a test before you come into my apartment. I know. <laughs> you're not bringing COVID. You know, whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, that's your problem. But you're not bringing COVID. And all these people, oh, your classes are extraordinary, but I can't study with you because you have more fire about you. They could all be in my classes right now if they would have waited three months before they made this idiotic decision, you know? So you have to be able to say no, and you have to be able to be detached. You know, also, uh, the only people you can say no to, and I really mean this, the children, your parents, you have to make the effort to get big enough to deal with their bullshit. I mean it. Your parents gave birth to you. Without them, you're not here. They were the channel that allowed you to come into the world. You gave birth to your children. So that is the only areas where I say, no, you have to get, other than that, you know, there's 8 billion people on this planet. How many of them do Kundalini Yoga? <laughs> How many of them do deep meditation? Well, not too many. And the energy has to go to people that really treasure it. And they want to do something in a practical way about their lives. Otherwise, you can sit here for 50 years and, you know, 
And if you don't really make that kind of depth of effort, it's not going to change. Nothing is going to change. Thank you. You know, just to finish this, all it's a matter of Madali is you just getting big enough to say no in a loving way, not in an angry way, not in a nasty way, not to put the person down. No, in a loving way. Please try and sit still. To me, it's more important to nurture one human being that can grow and develop a chemistry inside that can become spiritually enlightened than to try to nurture you know, a thousand people. And that's what I look for, that depth of quality in a human being. That's all I want, you know? I don't care where they come from. I'm not interested in religion, race, or any of that stuff. What is the depth of quality and what is the effort they're willing to make? Or is this something they do, like they go to an adult education class at a university and study something, you know, whatever they study, you know? Or is it something that, hey, this is really important and I'm willing to work at this? I'm willing to support this. I'm willing to make an effort to grow in myself and to mature enough that maybe I can one day do what Stuart does and nurture people. I mean, that's the best gift you can give me. And that's all I look for and ask for in people. And other than that, I mean, what is this all about? What is life about? It's such a theater of the absurd, you know? Just you know, nonsense that goes on here. People blowing at each other up, killing each other, tens of thousands, for what? One day it becomes a paragraph in history, you know? And the same crap is going on somewhere else in the world, you know? but somebody that's willing to do God's service in the world. And I don't mean religious type stuff. I mean, through a deep connection with higher energy in the world. I mean, that is really a noble person and a person that I treasure. The Rudy's, the Nichamandas, you know, people like that, you know, Ramakrishna, And everybody, anyone who comes here can build that kind of an inner life. As I say, it's not just an adult education club. Not, you know, where you go twice a week and, you know, you learn something about, I don't know what. <laughs> People learn, you know. And as soon as it's over, you forget about it. It's gone. <clears throat> Does anyone else have a question? You know, I'm not running a cult. I'm not running a religion. I, I don't know what I'm running here. I just. You know, sometimes I want to run away from here. <laughs> I've been doing this Zoom thing for two and a half years now. I mean, my God, you know. But, you know, it's a way I can serve higher energy. I can keep Rudy's work alive in the world. And hopefully out of it, people will come that they also will be able to do something. 
maybe not on Zoom, but who knows where, you know, life changes all the time, you know? Does anyone else have a question? Okay. The question of I talk about that subject a lot, only because I've been through it, you know, with so many people, hundreds of people, maybe thousands of people. And I understand the importance of this meditation and what kind of a treasure it is and who it needs to be given to, people that are willing to make the effort. And it's really sad, it's like a department store with an elevator goes endlessly into the cosmos and you can get out of any floor and shop. And a lot of people get out on a certain floor, you know, and they just get lost there. A better life than they were living, but they get lost on that floor. Okay, if there are no more questions, as I always end these classes, and I really sincerely mean it, God bless you all for being here. Your presence has done so much to help me grow. I have nothing but gratitude to every single person that's in these classes. And your presence here really makes me work in great depth by myself. And I frankly, even after all these years of doing this, still need to work in great depth by myself. And I think that is the essential ingredient. And I would like to do that the rest of my life. Just work in great depth by myself. So thank you. All. God bless you. All. There'll be a meditation on... What is today? Wednesday, Thursday. And I'm looking forward to seeing you. Have a wonderful evening. All right, Stuart. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stuart.